Hey guys, today I will be installing the Spoon Sports Frostle Body onto this S2000. Now I am in the middle of converting it into a track or race car, but the throttle body is inside there. We will open that in a second. Now for some of you guys that may know about Spoon Sports throttle bodies, um, it's exactly the same one as Honda's one, so it will be a perfect fit, but the intake side is slightly larger than the butterfly side, so it won't give a great deal of power. We'll install this anyways and see how it goes. Okay, so in here should be a genuine Honda gasket for the throttle body. Obviously, if we take out the old one, uh, then this is made out of paper, it will stick to the surface. So that is the part number there for you guys if you need it. But onto the throttle body itself. So there are no obvious markings to say that this is a spoon product. But if I just measure this part, so this is the butterfly side, so that's around 64. And the intake side, the opening, you can see that there, it's just on 70. So this is the genuine item. Now we also want to make sure that if I order the right one, it now looks spot on. So let's get removing this AEM intake and then the throttle body itself. With this AEM V2 intake, luckily there is a section that I can detach down here. So I'll be removing both sides of this Jubilee clip. With the intake out of the way, it gives us plenty of space to work on the car. So I'm just going to remove some of the sensors. So we have a TPS throttle position sensor, and I think that's a map sensor as well at the top. Before I continue, yes, this throttle cable will have to be removed as well. I just want to measure this just to make sure we don't have a spoon product on it already. It's showing about 64, 65 millimeters. So this is a standard throttle body on here at the moment. Let's get changing this. There are two 12 millimeter bolts and two 12 millimeter nuts. So two nuts on either side and two bolts down here. But before we do that, there's also two cooling pipes. So one right at the bottom here and one to the side. So we definitely need to put a rag or a cloth beneath that to catch the fluid as I remove it. I believe I will do one side at a time first. Otherwise, if I do both at the same time, um, then too much fluid will come out and I might not be able to clean it all up at the same time. So I'm currently working on this coolant hose down here. It is quite hard to see. I think the best thing to do is take off the intake completely. Here yeah, we already have some coolant coming out as I squeeze the hose. I just want to be gentle. I don't want to break this hose and then having to replace it. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of fluid coming out. Now it's starting to come out. Oh dear, let's cool it in the hose. So what I'm doing here is just trying to break loose the hose because they have been sat for some time. Oh, not much fluid in there. And we want to put this slightly higher so it's not going to come out. Now the four nuts and bolts. Time to remove the throttle cable. So you want to give it a bit of slack move the wire across and it should come out fairly easily like so that is more or less it we can set that aside and now just checking that everything is off and i'm just going to tap lightly along here just hopefully it will ease itself off there we go didn't take a lot of force just need a bit oh we are lucky today the whole gasket well, the old one has come off nicely. Look at the amount of carbon that has built up around there. Here is a side-by-side -side view of the two throttle bodies. So you can tell on the original Honda one, it's so much thicker on the lip here. And with the spoon one, you can see it's a lot thinner. But looking down at the intake chamber, it is quite full of carbon. So I'm going to try my best to try to clean around this area and the surface, of course. And then we'll get on with fitting the new one. We're going to use some carb cleaner. Now I actually thought that there was going to be a lot of old gasket deposits along here because that's what usually happens. They have been on there for so long that when you take it off it just tends to stick there. Look at that. Look how dirty it is inside. I think I will just run over the surface with this gasket scraper just very lightly just in case there are some deposits that we don't want there. Not too hard to scratch the surface itself. A bit more carb cleaner. 
This is what it looks like after cleaning it. Just stick on the new gasket, perfect fit. And the throttle body itself, lovely. It's looking very nice. Time to put on all the bolts and all the hoses. Just before I tighten everything up, I just want to show you guys what Spoon gives you. So a brand new map sensor, a brand new throttle position sensor as well. And before we put it on, we just want to make sure everything is free and clean and is just easy to operate. Next up, I will do those coolant hoses that were leaking. Put a rag back there. Don't want it all over my alternator. Making sure those hoses are tight, giving a gentle tug. And now the throttle cable. So reverse procedure of before, just bring this down, fit it in first. There we go, just making sure. It's really loose at the moment, so it will need adjusting. We'll do the sensors next. Throttle position sensor and the map sensor. These throttle body bolts, they are supposed to be torqued up to 16 foot pounds, but I don't have a torque wrench that goes that low. My lowest goes to 20 foot pounds, so I'm going to do it by hand and kind of guess it. But yeah, as long as they're nice and tight, you shouldn't have a problem. Because this new throttle body is larger, I will have to undo this Jubilee clip just a bit more so that I can just go over that lip there. And it was quite hard to get to. That's better. And I'll do the same for down here as well. Okay, let me just finish installing this and I will go through with what I have done. Before I adjust the throttle cable here, I just want to see if this actually works without adjusting. So if I put my foot down on the full throttle, it's actually going to max. And if I let go, it's got quite a bit of slack. So I'm not too sure if I need to adjust this. Let me switch on the engine um, and then see how it idles and then adjust from there. The engine is now started and from what I can tell, it's actually idling pretty fine. So let's have a feel here. Seems okay at the moment. Let's focus in on that. Okay, so as I touch the accelerator, there is a bit of play before I feel the cable, but that was there before. I just tap on it lightly. Seems okay. So I don't think I'm going to be adjusting the cable yet. I'll take it for a test drive and we'll see how it does. Right, so as I was saying, this was a pretty good installation. My ASM oil filter bracket is still there. It hasn't fallen off, so that's great news. But when I was driving this um, down the road earlier, I did put my foot down and go 100%. So it does hit maximum. But it does seem a bit weird with that play. I think there's more play now than before, so I will be adjusting this sometime soon. This is another part done. My Spoon Sports themed S2000 is coming along. I do have the original airbox coming with the filter and the snorkel, I think that's what they call it, and also a Spoon ECU as well. So those are pretty exciting once they will be installed. So once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope if you are changing your throttle body, this was of a bit of use for you guys. I'll see you soon.